Hey there everyone, this is Michael Dougal sharing with you the most common side effects that are associated with using ashwagandha as a nootropic supplement. Most people are using ashwagandha for the purpose of helping them to reduce levels of anxiety, stress, and also boosting cognition and boosting testosterone levels. And fortunately, ashwagandha, it's a well-studied nootropic supplement. There's a lot of literature that's been done on it, which had only concluded that there were benefits, but when it came to side effects or adverse effects, there was basically nothing. Until just recently, because in this study over here, liver dangers of herbal products, a case report of ashwagandha induced liver injury, where they do a thorough analysis on some of the more popular herbal supplements, things like kava kava and ashwagandha. It reads that ashwagandha should be more often considered as a potential liver damaging factor and doctors should pay attention to herbal supplements taken by patients. And they make reference to a specific experience which happened in 2014, whereas what happened was in attempt to alleviate high stress levels, an individual was recommended to take two to three times of the recommended dose of ashwagandha, and that same year, they were actually hospitalized for jaundice. Jaundice being a condition which is like the yellowing of the skin and even the eyes. But then what's concerning was that when the individual actually stopped using ashwagandha, what had happened was their liver enzymes and everything seemed to be back to normal. And although that's just one experience, maybe the worst experience, it wasn't the first time it's happened. As shown in another study, they looked at the liver function and five patients and all of them had developed jaundice. And then same thing in 2021. And then there were several more experiences all related to the liver during that year. Now I've been using ashwagandha as a nootropic supplement for around eight years. I can't say that I feel like my liver's unhealthy. I'm actually pretty pleased with what it's done for me. There have been times when I took time off of ashwagandha and then actually returned back to using ashwagandha. Now I'll use it twice a day typically. And I feel like it's only made me healthier. Something that I did expect with ashwagandha was that it would help me to reduce my stress levels, which is one of the main reasons why I've taken it. And I actually feel a little bit more healthier on it. See, ashwagandha is actually referred to as the king of herbs. The category of supplements that ashwagandha would fall under would be an adaptogen. Adaptogens, they're herbal supplements which help you to reduce levels of stress. And I really feel like ashwagandha is probably the most powerful and at the same time safe supplement for better handling stress levels. And I've tried so many different supplements to help me reduce levels of stress. And I've probably not even found anything that's um, even close to the effectiveness of ashwagandha as a supplement. And it's great because when you're using ashwagandha after about a week's of use, you can clearly tell that you're in a better mood all the time. And when typical stressors take place during the day, they don't cause that same uh, flight or fight reaction and making you respond emotionally. You're still able to maintain somewhat of a calm state, a logical state, which can help you to encounter that stressor and move forward. Now that's my personal favorite reason for using ashwagandha as a nootropic supplement, but other individuals really like using ashwagandha for increasing their testosterone levels. They also like it for increasing their sleep quality. Something very interesting that ashwagandha does is actually reduce cortisol levels. See, cortisol is a stress hormone, but when you're having abnormally high cortisol levels, it's responsible for weight gain, for lack of quality sleep, and also brain fog. And so ashwagandha and actually another supplement called phosphatidylserine, which I've talked about in this video over here, these two supplements are pretty much the only ones which can I say like powerfully reduce cortisol levels while being relatively safe. And for me, yes, I feel it more after about a week's of use, but I still do feel some sort of acute Acute positive response following ashwagandha ingestion. So I'll ingest some ashwagandha, I'll feel pretty calm for a few hours, right? But then also after taking it for about a week's time, I notice that I can kind of wake up and I'm always in a, a better, kind of a more unattached state where I'm less likely to think about the worst case scenarios about things. I'm just a little bit more laid back about the process, which leads to one of the major side effects with ashwagandha, which is demotivation. And this is probably the most common reason why people actually discontinue the use of ashwagandha is that they start taking it, they feel a little bit better, perhaps they're getting better sleep quality, but then they notice their actual work expenditure has dramatically lessened. It's like suddenly you feel a bit complacent, a bit apathetic, a bit like things are okay. I don't really need to work that hard. And some individuals just feel very lazy and they actually feel a bit more tired than typically. I know I feel this way as well, which is the reason why I don't typically take ashwagandha first thing in the morning. And this is highly variable between individuals. Some people like taking ashwagandha first thing in the morning, but for most people, they don't find ashwagandha being energizing or stimulatory. They actually feel like it brings them down a little bit, brings their energy you down a little bit as well. So if you're looking to boost your productivity and you see yourself as a pretty stressed out person, perhaps ashwagandha may be able to help you out. But if you don't see yourself as the most stressed out individual, then I would say ashwagandha probably isn't the best thing for you. Or if you were to use ashwagandha, then pair it up with something which can also help boost dopamine levels or help you be more focused, be more productive so that you can have like an optimal experience when using ashwagandha. And this recent study does again state that ashwagandha may exist
exhibit cardioprotective properties, be helpful in the treatment of sleep disorders, improve stress resilience, reduce anxiety, and be helpful in hypothyroidism and enhance muscle strength and recovery. See, with respect to thyroid health, if you do have any concerns about your thyroid health or you're taking something for your thyroid, then I would definitely talk to your general practitioner before using ashwagandha because if you have hyperthyroidism, which is when your thyroid levels are too high, that's associated with weight loss, it's associated with irregular heartbeats, and it's associated with you not being able to get that restful sleep that you want. Some other common side effects that are associated with ashwagandha include lightheadedness for one, a tiredness, again, that's a little bit similar to demotivation. Some people have experienced causing a breakout of acne, and for some individuals, although very rare, that's hair loss. Now, why that may happen, who knows? But again, I really wanna emphasize how rare these occurrences are. It's because of the fact that ashwagandha is probably one of the most popular supplements out there. So when you have such a large volume of people ingesting supplements, of course, you're gonna read the odd anecdote talking about something. But it's been my experience with ashwagandha that uh, the side effects and the benefits are pretty consistent, meaning that after you take it for about a week, you have a good understanding of what ashwagandha is gonna do for you and what side effects that you're going to experience. Whereas some other supplements, they can really surprise you out of nowhere. One day you'll ingest it, you'll feel good. The following day you'll ingest it and you'll feel awful. So with these new recent papers talking about potential liver damage, I think it's more important than ever that everybody is very mindful of where they're getting their ashwagandha from. Um, especially with ashwagandha root, there seems to be a lot of uh, shady places out there trying to tell you that they have a better form of ashwagandha. But I'd say that you're probably gonna be better off taking one of the extracts, like my favorite um, extract is the KSM 66. You can get it in the powder form, you can also get it in the pill form. The powder doesn't taste that bad. This is from Nootropics Depot. I've been using this specific product for about four to five years and really enjoying it. I haven't tried ashwagandha from elsewhere because there was really no need to. I like that with the KSM 66 extract. It's slightly energizing, yet at the same time calming, like how you would expect ashwagandha to be. Now, something to be mindful of when you're looking at different ashwagandhas for you to ingest is that you can use different extracts of ashwagandha depending on what sort of benefit that you're hoping to get from it. For example, uh, you can take a stronger form of ashwagandha called shodan, which has a higher percentage of withanolides, and that's gonna be a lot more calming. And so for a supplement like that, most people would ingest it before bed because it's so calming and would help them to have a better quality sleep. With the KSM 66 form, it's more common that people would take it during the day. And then of course we have the Sensual form as well, which has a higher percentage of withanolides than KSM 66, but not as high a percentage of withanolides as Shodan. So make sure that you're getting high quality ashwagandha and look at the different extracts. I've talked more about the different types of ashwagandha in this video right here. And if you're experiencing some of these side effects, specifically demotivation, then there are a couple of things that you can do to help you to reduce the side effects. For example, of course, you can change the type of ashwagandha that you've been using, or you can actually change the dosage so the time in which you take it. For example, example, when it comes to demotivation, that's why I stopped using it first thing in the morning because I noticed that ashwagandha was making me a little bit tired. See, I typically work out first thing in the morning and so I wouldn't want to use any supplement that would hinder performance. Yet at the same time, some individuals use ashwagandha and they actually get a performance boost and they're able to have actually a better workout from using ashwagandha. So it's a highly variable supplement like I've mentioned, so you'll find what works best for you. And what are your thoughts about this new concerning information about ashwagandha potentially causing liver damage. I'd love to know in the comment section below. Do subscribe and drop a like if you did get value from this video. And if you wanna chat with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can connect with me on Patreon and make sure to visit our Discord server. We have a 24 seven chat room. We're answering questions in a time sensitive fashion. I thank you for your interest in nootropics and I look forward to seeing you next time.